the, the tapping you got to write. And uh, I want you to come up with one word that you believe describes your personality. Uh, real quick, one word. Uh, type it into the right, and we'll discuss those in a second. Aloof? What does that mean, Cameron? We'll get to those in a second. Oh, okay. Sorry, Mr. No. Hannah. No problem. Are you having trouble? I'm in the AV department, so I can help you with any technology issues that you're having. I absolutely might need some. Uh, whenever I try to share my entire screen, I get the, the domino cascading effect. Okay, put the, um, click, instead of having it... Uh, what picture do you have up? Do you have your own picture or do you have somebody else's? I have my own. Try to put somebody else's and try it that way. Right. And then click on the share screen and see what happens. That was And now click up to where you want to go. Everybody see Yemi? I see Yemi. <laughs> Hi, Abby. All right, so we got your verbs there. Uh, keep those in, in mind. Uh, we're going to come back to those in a few seconds. Uh, so today, we're going to discuss resume writing. Our objective is to create a resume using written communication and utilize the proper tone, grammar, and bias for language for the next place. We'll create these resumes using Microsoft Word that you guys are familiar with because we did the lesson last week on cover letters and business letters. Uh, we'll also discuss applying font paragraph attributes as well as utilizing bullets to form format your document. Before we begin, does anybody have any idea what a resume is? Well, a resume is a brief written account of personal, educational, and professional qualifications and experience prepared by an applicant for a job. But it's not necessarily just the job. There are several different types of resumes. There's a professional resume, there's a resume for a scholarship, which is what you guys will be using, hopefully, uh, in the coming years or the coming months. And that's the one we're going to focus on today, uh, preparing resumes for scholarships. And we're going to begin with the three F's of resume writing. Now, all of you have a handout here, three F's of resume writing. And I want you guys to follow along with it and take notes. And once we get to the end of the presentation, I'm going to have you Take a look at a couple of resumes and you're going to tell me whether these are professional resumes that people are putting together for employment or if these are resumes uh, that people are putting together for a, a scholarship. Excuse me, Mr. Hanna. Yes, ma'am. Um, you were saying that a resume can be used for a job and a scholarship? Not the same resume. Not the same resume. There will be two entirely different resumes. But we'll get to that in just a second, uh, okay. to how they're broken down with what audience that you're presenting to, um, and the material that you're going to put in each resume. Okay. Uh, first, your function, which hopefully will answer your question. Uh, the first F of resume writing, the function of a resume is to inform the audience about yourself, uh, hoping to accomplish something that might be include getting a job, uh, getting into college, winning a scholarship, or getting an internship. So to answer your question, you're going to have two separate audiences for your different types of resumes. Right? You're going to have what will be a hiring manager or an HR manager if you're trying to get a job, or it might be an admissions officer, or uh, somebody who is over a scholarship. Um, that might or might not necessarily be within the university or college in which you're trying to get in. Some of them might be private top up scholarships. Some of them might be scholarships through places of employment. So, for instance, Carol EMC, I believe, gives scholarships, and there's several. Chick fil A is another that you might be uh, putting together a resume in order to get a scholarship. So, the function of the resume is to inform the audience about what you're trying to accomplish. Next, we go to form. The second F is form. Resumes need to look a certain way. You need to put together your resume in a manner which is, is visually 
appealing and pleasing to the eye. Uh, it can be cluttered. Um, you want it to be easy to read with important points of what you want to present to the reader or the audience. Moving on from form, we have effectiveness. Right? You have a clear purpose that shows why you're writing it. It's visually appropriate and appealing and easy to read. It includes all the necessary information about yourself. And this last one's extremely important. It is grammatically correct with no spelling or punctuation errors. Nothing would get your resume thrown out faster than if you have misspelled words or, or grammatical errors. Uh, that's an important point, and, and you should be focused on that. You really should have no issue with that. You guys know from working with Microsoft Word that you have a review and you have a spell check on Microsoft Word and pretty much any Microsoft document that you're working with. Okay? Any questions so far? Review. All right, moving on. All right, there's several components to make up your resume. You have your contact information, job objective, which is, depending on who you ask, it might or might not be necessary, specifically when you're trying to target an employment resume or a professional resume. Your education, employment, prior employment, skills and abilities and activities and others. So with your, your resume for the scholarship, you're going to focus, or, or a lot of your focus is going to be on activities, honors, skills, and abilities, and your education. Mr. Hanna? Yes, ma'am. I just wanted to say I thought it was really clever and interesting how you use effectiveness, and it's really not an F, but you made it one of the Fs. And I just thought it was kind of cool. Good it's kind of like phonetics. Pharmacy, depends on how you look at it. But right, yes. Thank you. But it was it's just a uh, a mnemonic device that we're using to hopefully when I ask you later what the three Fs are, you'll be able to tell me form function and effectiveness. We'll make sure you're the first one we ask. <laughs> Thank you. I'll pay close attention. Good deal. Right. Right, moving now. Most of these are pretty self explanatory and I've included them on the shared drive on your computers. So you guys, this PowerPoint specifically, so you guys, um, when we get to the point of you creating your own resumes, and you'll be able to uh, look back and, and review the PowerPoint to make sure that you haven't missed any, any of the highlights. Um, let's get through employment history. We're going to move down to getting started. Now, you guys have... The graphic organizer with you as well. Now, I put this together so once we're through with this, you're going to go through and we're going to, I'm going to walk you through and help you complete the steps on your graphic organizer so you can get started on your resume. So, first, you're going to make a list of all the things that you're going to need to include on your resume your contact info, name, address, email address. You guys leave out your Snapchat, your Instagram, your Twitter handle. Just just keep it simple with your name, your address, and your uh, phone number. All right. Any past schools for now? You're in high school. Uh, no need to include your middle school or your elementary school. Just keep it simple with your high school. Um, any work of volunteer history you might have done. Some of you have worked summer jobs. If you haven't, if you've been a babysitter, if you. Mr. Hanna. Yes, ma'am. Um, are you sure we can't include our elementary school? Because I really like my fifth grade elementary school teacher. Uh, okay, wait. Don't include her. I right, said so it was a Please first. Please leave your message. Don't include her on your resume uh, under school history, but send her a note and ask her if you can use her as a reference when you apply for your job. Okay, thank you. You're welcome. Uh, you also want to focus with your accomplishments accomplishments when you're looking at your resume in order to gain a scholarship. Yes, the I have a question. Yes, ma'am. Sorry, but, but I don't have any of those things. All I have is a school. I don't have any interest. I'm not interesting. So why is this important to me now? I'm too young, aren't I? Well, it's been easy basics not only for getting a scholarship, but also to obtain future employment. And, uh, on average, people change jobs 11 times in their lifetime. And your resume 
made is your first impression on your employers. So if you have no interest, uh, have no skills, this is how you're going to remain invisible to those employers when you do your job. So in order for you to to succeed, you're going to need to learn how to do this or be hungry. What's that? Okay, thank you. Oh, oh, I have a great idea. Oops, sorry to interrupt. Alicia, if you want, you can join the AV club with me, and that could be interesting. I have a lot of fun. It's just okay, that, that's cool. All right, I'll let you more know more about it later. Sure. I think that, uh, yeah, I think Benji was the sponsor of that, so you guys can get together afterwards and, and discuss the AV Club. Okay. So you have to have your three S in front of you. If you'll scroll down to the bottom, and the directions for you, for you to review the sample resume provided, take note of subscribing each of the three S. What I'd like for you to do is take a look at this first resume. Can you guys see that okay? small. Does that help? Yes. Yeah, that helps. That okay. helps. I can't. You know, I can. I, I need. You know, I wear glasses, so it's still not clear. Okay, I'm sorry. Well, it's still the best you can with it. Um, but I need for you to take a look at this resume and then determine whether this is a professional or a scholarship resume, an educational one, if you will. Just take a second. Shared, you guys can use. 
that will help you when you word your resume um, to look professional and be active. Mr. Hannah, I still don't know what aloof means. Sorry, what do I don't Camera wrote aloof. Camera, what does it mean? Aloof. What do you mean? It means that you're not serious. You are. Uh, you're like, you're not serious. A lot of people do. You have a, well, who cares? That? Is that what you mean, Camera? Yeah, that's it. Wow, that's not very good for a resume. Moving on. Using the back professional profile will give you ideas of, of how to word your resume. Okay. Um, what words you should focus on? Some might call it buzzwords. I, I don't like them except for looking. Nevertheless. Uh, for instance, Yemi. Yemi has steadfast. You mean to, uh, under his description of his work history, to say he steadfastly um, worked on uh, a project that brought X amount of dollars uh, to the homeless community in order to provide food. Mr. Hannah, I'm your problem child because I don't know what steadfast means either. Uh, steadfast means either. All right, I'll tell you what. Um, I'm not exactly sure either, but if you give me the rest of the day to research it, you can come back after school and we can discuss it for 30 or 40 minutes until we figure out what steadfast means to you. How's that? Alright, I like staying after school with you. Sure. Right. Mr. Hanna, I don't know where the shared drive is. Do you can you remind me? I will absolutely remind you. When you click on start, you go to computer, you click on the H drive, it'll say share drive next to it. You'll see my name, you'll see intro to business and technology, you'll click on that folder and from there, uh, you'll click on the date, today's date, and there all this material will be, and you refer back to that. Thank that you. Thank you so much. You're welcome. All right. So back to the rest of uh, the recording. Huh? As you guys begin to work on this, we don't have time to finish it today. You're going to take it home and finish it tomorrow, and we're going to hand it in. Um, but before you leave today, I need for you to hand in your three F's of resume writing so I can go over and make sure that you understand everything. And tomorrow I will take up the graphic organizer, go over your answers with you, hand them back. At that point we'll get on the computer, I provided you guys with a template, and we can begin writing your resumes online. Now, the reason I'm doing this is that you guys will ultimately create a cover letter like you did last lesson plan, create your resume, Find the job that you wish to work for in the future. Put together a PowerPoint presentation. At that point, we're going to bring in administrators, business professionals, and you'll have your students that you're going to give your presentation in order to try to get a job. Okay? And they will be the determining factor whether or not you're hired or not. Any questions, guys? All right, we got about just another minute to go. Um, wrap up all your, your worksheets. Uh, hand in your three F's, and if you guys will take home this graphic organizer, finish tonight, bring it back tomorrow, and we'll be started on the uh, your actual resume. Thank you, guys. Um, Mr. Hanna, I don't really have like 18 seconds, but did you see that Lasagna put cheese wild? That's not right, is it? I did not see that. So I didn't see that. It is. That's not right for a resume. You don't want people to know that. No, you absolutely did not, did not want to know that. Um, maybe we'll keep that with our Time for us to go. Yes.